console obj object provides us access to the browser's debugging console and allows us to help debug. So there's a number of different methods that are available in order to output content into the console. So we're going to be covering those in this lesson. We're going to be looking at the console log, console error, console directory, info warn, how to set up tables, how to use time, and also how to group content together within the log. So these are some of the examples of what we're going to be covering in this lesson that's open here within the console. And these are some of the examples that we're going to be covering in this lesson. And this is all going to be done within the Chrome Developer Tools console. We've got JavaScript opened on the left-hand side within the editor. And on the right-hand side, we've got the HTML file opened within the browser and using a Chrome browser and opened up the console. In order to open up console within a Chrome browser, you can go anywhere on the page and right-click and select Inspect. That will open up the editor window. And from there, you can select within the tabs console. And I'll open it up wider. So there are tabs across the inspect dashboard. And the second one in typically is going to be console. Another way to open up the console in Chrome is to go to the top right hand side within the Chrome browser, select the three dots. And then under the more tools, you can select developer tools and that will also open the developer tools window. So once you've got that open, you're going to be able to use your JavaScript code in order to write into the console. So let's start out by creating a variable. We'll just set a value and this can just say hello. So it'll be a string value that says hello. And most of you are probably already familiar with using the console object and then using the log method in order to log content out into the console. So when I save it, we get the content from code3.js, which is the file name that I'm using to write the code. And then it also indicates with the colon that we're using line three, and that's where we're getting the output that says hello. So within the console object, there are a number of other methods that are available besides log. So log will typically just output straight what the content is that we've specified. There's also a console error and console error outputs an error message into the web console. So if you have the message as a string value, it will output it as being in red, also specifying the file and the line that the error was thrown on. So that's going to stand out a bit more. And then typically you can select and open up. And this is where you can place specific error information. You just have the error noted unless there's an actual output within the parameters of that error, you're not going to see anything being set. So entering in a value will help to establish what we want to output within the error message. So let's set up some variables. So one will have as a string and then we can use the string as the message output. We'll also set up an object to be output into the error. So we already saw what the string does in the error message. Let's update this and output the object contents. So we'll have a property and then the value associated with the property. And we can also have multiple properties with multiple values associated with it. So that will output it within an object format, allowing us to see the object contents output within the error of the console. And we'll output the array contents. And as we're going to be having multiple outputs into the console, so I'm going to make some updates here where we're going to actually set the value of val, and that's going to be whatever, whichever data type that we want to use within the output. So I'll just do a quick update there. I'll move the console log down and just above the console error. So that way we can easily switch the console content around. And there is a way to add actually styling into the output of the console. So let me show you how you can do that. And this is going to be a nice way that we can easily read the content into of the console. So if we use the console log and we want to output what we were outputting as the console, so let's or the console method, we this is where we can specify using the percentage C 
and then what we want as the value for the output. So for instance, if we want the string value to be outputting and as console as log, and we can comma separate this out, and now we can apply some styling to the output. So let's set a background and specify the background color that we want to use. So in this case, I'm gonna set it up as blue. So that will give us a blue value there. And we can also apply multiple properties to it. So we can have this type of output. And in addition, we can have both by separating it with the colon as we would with any other type of styling. So we could have the background and the color being output into the console in this type of format. Let's create a function that can handle that. And first it will be using the method that we want to use. And then it will take the color that we want to use. So we can bring this into a function that will output the method. And I'm going to make a quick update to this in order to use the template literal. So those are the back ticks. And this way, we can specify the styling of the background color as well, in addition to the text. And we're going to just send that in using this function called logger. And then here we just need to specify the color value that we want for the background. So let's try that out. And so now we can see that we're outputting it as the log and it's going to be specifying what we're outputting. So in this case, we want to specify that we're outputting error and maybe we want to do that within red. And we can see that now we're outputting the error from the console. And here I'm just going to specify the console method. And that way we can see that console, console method log and then console method error. And we get a nice way that we can see the content being output. There's also uh, outputting it. And I'm going to take the console and I'm going to separate it out as a separate window. So that way we can view the contents that's being output into the console in the larger window. So let's also select that and we can run the method as well. So where we're specifying the method and because it's going to be a string value, we can specify it to uppercase using the JavaScript string methods and that will output it within the uppercase format. And going back to the different console methods, so let's do another one. And the one that you might be familiar with is when we're looking at the document object, if we were just to output the document object itself into the log, and we were just using the document object, so we use the document object and output it into the log, and I'll set that as blue. That gives us this type of format when we're outputting. But if we want to have it within a directory format, we can use dir, and that will output the document object within a directory format. And the difference is that when we open it up within Chrome, here we see the HTML output, whereas when we use the directory object, this will output it within a directory format, and it prints it within the, the, all of the elements within a JSON-like tree, whereas the log prints it within an HTML type. So let's uh, provide that example of the directory. I'll get rid of the log. And that way we can see that this is using the directory method. I'll update it and have a green background color for that. I'll make this slightly smaller so that we can fit more different, diff we can fit additional methods. There's another one that allows us actually to clear the content. So if we do a console clear, that will clear out all of the existing content. There's a console count that we can use. So if we had a four and we want to do a count to 10 and increment i plus one, this is where we can use the console count. And I'll use the logger in order to indicate that this is count and set this to be purple. So if we have a console count, method it's going to output it as console count and it can have the one parameter which is going to be a string value so if you don't specify it it will just do a default and if we do specify a string value it can output that string value within the count 
So when we output it as i, we see within the console, the first number is going to be the value of i, and the second one is going to be the count. And you're probably wondering, okay, well, why is the count always 1? And that's because the count is based on the label value. So if we were to update the label and call it test and get rid of the i, then now the count is going to be referencing the value of test, and it's going to be outputting it that way, accounting to the label. So it depends on how many times you're calling that particular label. So if I have one outside of the loop, then it's going to continue with the count. So every time that count is used, it looks at the label, which is going to be the value that's provided here within the parameters. And then you can always associate it any time that you call to it. Uh, so if we were to call to it within the logger, the value of test when we start is going to be actually different than the value that we... It's going to be incrementing the value every time we reference test. And notice as well, because we did do a clear, so if we were to remove the clear, we see all of the references to test starting at 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down to 26, 24. And if we were to save that and have the clear, then what it's doing is every time it runs clear, it resets the count as well back to zero. You can always reference back to the count within your code as long as you're using the same label and the count will continue as long as you haven't cleared the contents of the console. And at that point, then the count will restart. There's also a console information. So let's uh, select that and output the console information. I'm gonna keep the console clear and actually gonna set another console clear and get rid of the console count within the logger function. And this time, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be outputting the information. So outputting the info, and let's set this as, and console, instead of log, let's do console information. So what console information does is it writes a message to the console. Now console info, on some browsers, like within Chrome, it's going to show up exactly the same as it would with console log. So there's actually not going to be much or any difference that you're going to be able to tell. If you're using Firefox and some other browsers can potentially add in different icons in order to distinguish between the two. There's also a console warn as well. So that's another option that you have within the console as a console method. So I'm going to just output this within the log format so that we can again distinguish between the two. I'll do this one as blue. So the console warn gives us this highlighted yellow background with the icon indicating that this is going to be a warning. In addition, within the dev tools, you're going to throw an error here that's going to be a warning that uh, there's a warning message that's been introduced into the console. There's also console table that allows us to display tabular data within the console. So make some more space there. And this time we're going to be doing the console table. The table is expecting, it's expecting an array or an object. So set it up as table. It is expecting an array or an object. So if you do have a string, it will still output it, but it's just going to output it regular. It's not going to be anything different uh, than the console log. But if you do take the table and if you do use an object, so we do have the object it will output it in this type of format and then also have the object that you can open and inspect underneath. And then there's also the array format. So if the array, and the array is uh, really ideal for this because it gives you the index and then the value, or if you're using the object, you've got the property and the value. So it displays it in a nice readable format with the alternating colors. You can also do a more complex array within the table. So if we did have an array that had a nested array type structure, so we had an array within an array and several arrays, and I'll just have three there so it's not as confusing. So with three different arrays, that's going to give us three rows of content, and each one of the rows of content is going to have the value at the top, and then the in the index value at the top for the column, and then the value of the property value just down here below. So it's going to associate it with the index and the property. 
So what happens if you add in an object into that? So you're going to get this type of structure because it's going to add the additional columns and then try to tabulate this in a readable format. So in this case, what happened here is that it had the two arrays, so they were matching with what it could use as columns for the headings of the columns, and then it attached the values accordingly. And for the properties of the object, they were different. So that's where it added in additional columns for those properties and then associated the values uh, just underneath those. So it is a really nice feature that allows us to make more readable content in a table like format when we're using arrays and objects. Clear. And we're going to set up a timer. So you don't need to have a label for console time. So you can just have a console time and it will just use the default whenever we want to end the time. And you need to have a console time and then also console end time, time end. And that will give you the default for the number of milliseconds that it took in order to run the code that's in between. So let's add in some code in between, setting a value of x. And we're going to loop through while x is less than 50,000. And then increment x by 1 so that we can spend a little bit more time on this. Uh, so there's also, we can set a label. So for instance, if we had test one, and here we want to end test one, we could attach a label to it. And that can potentially allow us to have multiple timers. So if we had one that was just time, and we did an end time, and then the test one, we ended that one, that's going to give us the label for the time and then the value in milliseconds that it took to run the code in between. There's also a group option where you can group content together within the output. So again, we'll do a console clear to clear out the existing contents of the console. And this is where we can use like a console group where we can set a group. And if we don't use a label, this is just going to use the predefined label. So within the console group, it's going to group several console logs together. So if we have two and three, and now let's close the group where we have the console group end. And because we didn't specify a label, it'll just use the default group. So that gives us this type of effect where we can open and close. And now let's remove out the console clears. And we'll go back to the function that we had initially. And we'll set up a console group. And the group will just be the logging group. And then here we're going to end the logging group. And so now it's captured everything within the group. So we can actually open and close the group. So all of tracked into the group that we're outputting. So by grouping it, it gives us another way that we don't have to clear out the console messages and we can track all of the logging within one grouping. So this has been an example of some of the things that you can do using the console object in JavaScript.